Hello, my name is Wei Wang, and I'm from the Interoperationalization Technology team. In this presentation, I'm going to introduce the migration support for TDX, which facilitates the deployment of TD guests in the cloud environment. Those guys here are also contributors to this project. So for this presentation, I have four parts in total. In the first part, I'm going to do a background introduction. And in the second part, I'm going to deep dive into the details of TTX non migration, which is followed by showing you some initial POC results. And in the last part, I'm going to introduce the current status and our future plan. Okay, let's get into the first part. Uh, let's first have a look at uh, some basics of TDX. Uh, so with TDX support in Intel server API and Layton CPUs, uh, there is a new execution mode called uh, SIM mode, which is further split into SIM root mode and SIM non-root mode. It is pretty much like the VMX root mode and non-root mode. So the, there is a piece of special software called uh, SIM module. It runs in the SIM root mode to manage guest private states. So with the, this SIM module, we are able to boot a special guest called the TD guest. TD guest is different from the traditional VM guest as it's uh, isolated from the from KVM and QEMU. So KVM and QEMU is removed from TCP. So for the TD private memory, it's not accessible to KVM and QEMU in this case. And the TD vCPU states are also not accessible. Uh, there is usually some shared memory shared between TD and, uh, and uh, the hypervisor. So this shared memory is usually accessible. For example, uh, the guest uh, driver may use bounce buffers. And this bounce buffer may be shared to QEMU to do the device emulation. For example, what I will add. Um, as the same module needs to be kept as uh, small as possible because it's a part of the TCP. So KVM still manages the whole physical resources and it assists the TDX module to virtualize TD by same course. For example, the secure EPT, which is owned by the TDX module, uh, KVM allocates pages and offers those pages to TDX module to build the secure EPT for the guest TD. Here are some special things I want to call out. So those are usually common questions asked by people in the first place. So the first thing is about the dirty page logging. Uh, we don't support the PML in the first release, so we will do rather protection. As the secure EPT is owned by TDX module, so KVM can't, uh, cannot uh, directly change the secure EPT entries to do rather protection. Instead, it needs to invoke a same calls to TDX module to do this rather protection. Uh, for the guest memory copy, as you know that uh, QEMU doesn't have direct access to TD private pages, so QEMU needs to ask KVM to do SIM, SIM call to TDX module to export and import TD private pages with encryption and decryption. Another thing is for the secure EPT on the destination side, it needs to be set up in advance before importing a TD private page because the importing the private page needs TDX module needs to work through the SEPT to find the final entry to import the guest page. Uh, then it's about the huge page split, um, but we don't consider it for our first release uh, based on the assumption that uh, TD works with 4 KB pages in the first place, but we will support it in later release. We also need to build a common framework to abstract the TDX migration implementations into vendor-specific layer. So this is to, to make it incorporated with other similar technologies similar to TDX from different vendors, basically. 
Okay, let's uh, have a look at more details about the TDX non migration. So let's first uh, have a look at the whole picture from the elevated view. So in this picture, a source TD, so the guest TD that needs to be migrated has a micro TD associated with it. So the micro TD, TD will assist the migration process. I will introduce more about it in the next slide. So before the migration starts, um, the micro TD needs to do some migration policy evaluation. So this, those include a compatibility check and a security attestation. So the goal for this evaluation is to ensure that uh, the destination physical environment, the destination environment that uh, the guest TD is going to be migrated is migratable and uh, secure to migrate. Another thing is the migration key setup. So there is a key used throughout the migration. So the key migration key is generated on the source micro TD and it's set to the TDX module using a TD core. And the key is also securely transferred to the uh, to the to the to the destination side of micro TD. So there is two there, there is to establish a secure communication channel between the micro TD on the source and destined side. So the migration key is used by the TDX module to encrypt and decrypt the migration data. So I listed the states that needs to be migrated here. So the TD, those include the TD private memory states, the TD vCPU states, and the TD scope states and for states uh, in clear text meaning that uh, they are not uh, encrypted that includes the TD shared memory states so for micro TD uh, it's a service TD to in assist uh, the migration of guest TD so I list uh, some points related to micro TD so its uh, basic responsibility is to perform migration policy evaluation and the migration key setup as mentioned before. And it leads to talk to the TDX module to set the migration key, for example, using TD core. And uh, it doesn't need to interact with the guest TD doing migration. And the micro TD is bound to the bound to the guest TD by the by the VMM using SIM core. And the one micro TD can assist the migration of multiple guest TDs at the same time. For example, if the uh, the host has like a 10 guest 10 guest TDs that needs to be migrated at the same time. So we in this case we can just put one just put one micro TD to support the migration for the 10 guest TDs. And the last thing about the micro TD is that it's a part of the platform TCB. And so it's included in the TD attestation. So as you know that the micro TD on the source side and on the destination side needs to exchange some sensitive information like the migration key so the key needs to be securely transferred. So we establish a TRS connection between the source and destination side micro TD. So uh, the dot lines here shows the message path to to transfer the to exchange the message. So the green ones here are for the micro TD to host the communication. So here we have a VSOC transport. So the VSOC transport, uh, we can choose to use the Vertile VSOC or a new transport based on uh, VM core. Um, so on the host side, there is also a relying, relaying, relaying entity called SOCAT. So the SOCAT is able to relay the message passed from this VSOC transport to the destination side uh, SOCAT. So the message goes through the host network stack, like the TCP IP stack. So once the message is received by the 
the senior side socket, it uh, relays the message further to the micro TD. So micro TD is vendor specific and uh, Intel will provide a reference design and a Rust-based implementation, but cloud vendors can design micro TD on their own. So for the reference implementation, we don't for the micro TD we don't run any operating system inside it, so it's just a, a bare metal implementation. So for the migration flow, um, the first thing we need to know is that uh, the migration thread needs to distinguish if a page is private or shared, so that it can decide to use the legacy. And page transfer path or using the export and import transfer path. So in this case, KVM maintains a per memory slot bitmap. So the this bitmap indicates if the page is private or shared. So this bitmap is set and cleared upon EPD violations. So the 14 GPA has a special bit tells KVM that uh, if this page, if this GPA is shared or private. So if it is a private page, then it will go through the TDX migration path. If it's a shared page, then it will be transferred as a normal realm, like the, re like the regular VM migration path. Okay, let's have a check uh, the, the flow here. So the, the yellow box here is the pre-migration stage. So at this stage, VMM will boot a micro TD and binds it to the guest TD using the SIM call here. So I marked it the, the SIM call red here. So the micro TD then generate a migration key and sets it to the TDX module using the TD call here. And then it initiates the migration. So at the migration setup stage, the migration thread will create one or more migration streams using the SIM call here. And then the, so the SIM call is the invoked through an I.O. control from QEMU to KVM. And then it starts dirty page logging, and then do huge page split. So for the route protection, it will use another two SIM calls here. So the block W is for block write, and unblock W is for unblock write. So when the guest page is dirty logged in the bitmap, so we can unblock this page for the guest TD to write. Then we move to the migration start stage. So in this stage, we will send the TD scope immutable states. So this is the first stage, first migration data that we need to send to the destination side. And after sending this immutable state, we move to the memory save iteration step. So at this step, we and the QME will ask KVM to export memory pages using this SIM call. And at the end of each round, it will also ask TDX module to generate a token. So there will be more introduction about this token in next slide. And when the iteration step ends, it moves to the complete step. Then the migration thread needs to pause the guest TD through KVM calling the, making this uh, SIM call, and then it exports the remaining memory pages sent to the destination, and then send the mutable TD scope states and the vCPU states, and lastly, it generates a starter token to, to get it imported on the destination side. So for the memory transfer, here is a picture here. So in this picture, we can see there is an in-order phase and an out-of-order phase. So for the in-order phase, the source TD is still running. Um, the order matters here. So it, it needs the token here to mark the order. So the order means that a, a newer version of a page must be imported after the older version of this page has been imported in each round. Uh, basically, this is not an issue for current QEMU implementation because uh, uh, in the QEMU migration process in each round, the page only gets transferred once. 
So for the auto of order phase here, um, and the source TD is a post in this case. So this is usually used by post copy. So uh, I'm not going to talk about um, auto of order in details because we will support this in next step. So as you know that uh, there are many states needs to be transferred. So in this slide, I'm going to introduce something about the migration data transport. So um, each migration stream creates a migration device emulated uh, using the KVM device. And then the migration thread do IO controls on the device FD to send the requests to the migration device in KVM. For example, it can ask this migration device in KVM to export the memory states. And then the KVM device allocates a piece of memory to be mapped by the migration thread. So this is using shared memory is just for performance purpose. So we don't need to copy the data between the user space and the KVM. So for the shared memory, it uh, consists of several sections. So the first one is the MD, MDMD buffer, which stores the migration bounder metadata. It's like the header. And for the green one here, it is the migration buffer, which stores the guest encrypted states. And uh, for the MAC list buffer here, it stores uh, max. So for example, we um, when we export uh, like a, a list of pages, for example, 16 pages, so there will be 16 MAC stored here. And also 16 GPAs corresponds to the MAC stored in the GPA list buffer here. So those data, like the MAC and uh, the encrypted states are all fueled by the TDX module. Uh, with multi-FD supports, we will have multiple I.O. thread to, to send the data. So each I.O. thread will create a KVM device here. So the encrypted states can be exported from TDX module in parallel in this case. Okay, in this slides, uh, I'm going to introduce the confidential guest migration framework. So the gray boxes here are the existing migration logic and the green ones are the new, new layer we added to the migration logic. So like at the setup stage, uh, we need to do TDX setup. So this is invoked through the, the framework and then at the start step, we need to send the immutable states. So this is also invoked through the green box. Then at the memory transfer step, um, the TDX specific function is invoked to export the memory from, sim from, uh, from the TDX module. And at the end of each migration round, uh, the TDX function is also called to generate a token to send it to the destination side. And at the end of the pre-copy, so the TDX function is also invoked to send the TD state and the vCPU state and the, a start token. Uh, on the destination side, the set setup is similar on, to the source side which creates the stream. And, and then for the load function, it also calls the TDX load function. So the load function basically loads whatever is received from the source side, like the memory state, the TD state, and the vCPU state. So from this function point of view, the state is just a piece of data. It doesn't care. It's to care what's stored inside. It just uh, the QEMU just uh, delivers the, the, the packet to the KVM and the KVM to the SIM core to TDX module. TDX module will pass those packets through the MD, MBMD header and store the data to the guest. Okay, so 
Okay, in this section, I'm going to show you some initial results. So one thing I need to point out here is that uh, those results are actually emulated results. So they are tests of legacy VM migration with adding the estimated TDX overhead to the memory copy. So we name it uh, pseudo TDX. So for the test environment, I we use the an E5 CPU running at 2.2 GHz, and we use the DDR4 RAM. And uh, for the leak, uh, we use the 210 gig leak, and uh, use the uh, direct uh, cable to connect them on the source and the test. So for the LAN migration, we set the downtime using the default uh, downtime number, so which is the 300 millisecond. And for the network bandwidth, we didn't set at the limit. And we have three types of guests here. So the first one is legacy guest. Uh, the second one is legacy guest, but they don't have zero page optimization. And the third one is TD guest. So we label the TD through the TDX here. So the tiny label here is the overhead of cycles we added to memory copy. And for the TDX case, it uh, doesn't use compression and uh, also doesn't use zero page optimization. So um, the model the overhead we have here, so we have two types of overhead based on the encryption algorithm that, that could be used by the TDX module. So one is the um, 2300 cycles so this is calculated uh, using the a factor here. So this factor is the encryption overhead per page plus the SIM call latency and the sys call latency. And another one is around the 4,000 cycles. We also tested with multi-FD. So with multi-FD configuration, we use the four IO threads to send the data. So inside the the guest we run a workload to dirty the memory at uh, this dirty rate, 600 megabytes per second. Um, so we can see the migration time first. So with the legacy case, it's around uh, uh, 13 seconds. If we remove the zero page optimization, the migration time gets longer because zero page skips the uh, most of the pages, so the time is shorter in the legacy case. Uh, since TD, for the first release of TDX, we don't have zero page optimization, so uh, with the TDX overhead, so the migration time gets longer. So the comparison will be compared between the second column and uh, the remaining TDX emulation because they all don't have zero page optimization. So with a little bit more TDX overhead here, so the migration time gets another 10 seconds longer. And if we enable multi-FD, the migration time will be improved, like closer to the legacy case here. Uh, for the downtime, I don't see too much difference between them. And uh, for the migration throughput, for this one, um, when we introduce the TDX overhead, the migration throughput will be lower. But if we enable multi-FT support, the throughput will get closer to the legacy case here. So this is uh, similar to the network throughput. For the CPU utilization, um, they are pretty much similar, except for the multi-FT case. As we use the multiple IO threads here, so the migration thread uh, CPU utilization is higher. Uh, I also mirrored the maximum migratable data rate. So this is the data about uh, the maximum data rate that can be supported to migrate the guest. For example, in the legacy case, it's 1,100 megabytes per second. If the guest uh, dirties the memory at uh, 1,200 megabytes per second, then this guest can't be migrated. So for the TDX case, 
the maximum migratable delta rate is a bit lower than the legacy case. If we enable multi-FD support, it's this maximum delta rate is improved, like uh, it's closer to the legacy case. Um, but as we know, for this test, uh, I used the full bandwidth of the leak, that is 10 gig, but in the real cloud environment, I know that uh, most uh, cloud vendors will allocate only a piece of the bandwidth to the migration thread. So I also did another test using network throating at uh, um, three gigabytes, uh, three giga uh, bits per second. So in that case, I don't see any difference between the legacy case and the pseudo TDX case because it's network capped. Okay, in this section, I'm going to introduce our current status and the future plan. So for pre-copy enabling, currently the draft code is ready and is pending to test. Um, and we plan to post out the patches to the QEMU and the KVM mini list in Q1 next year. And for multi-FD enabling, we plan to support it uh, in Q1 next year, after we post out the basic uh, pre-copy enabling patches. And for the post-copy enabling, we plan to support it in roughly by Q2 next year. Okay, that's all for this presentation. Thank you. Questions uh, and comments are welcomed.